Welcome to the Grand Board of Education meeting. Today is February 17th, 2021. And I can't see who's on our Zoom call, but Jenny, were you able to join? Yeah, Jenny's there. Jenny's on. Is Randy on too? Yep. Is Randy on? I don't see Brandon. Yeah, I don't see Brandon. Okay, but welcome, uh, special welcome to Representative Mark Anderson, who is here with us in person. I see on the screen, I believe we have Senator Kevin Wickhouse who's on the screen, and then Senator John Kitzel also on with us. Yep. Oh, great. Welcome, and thank you all for being here <coughs> for our presentation. And welcome to the Grammy Memorial High School students and staff who will be presenting our school in the spotlight tonight. So thank you all for being here. And without further ado, we'll be ready to take the next step of us. Super. Super. Super, thank you, Mrs. Thrall. Good evening and welcome to everyone. I want to especially welcome uh, State Senator John Kissel, State Senator Kevin Wickos, and Representative Mark Anderson for joining us tonight, as well as the high school administration staff and students who are here to present an incredible presentation, which we are going to see tonight. I want to let the, the Board of Education and the community know through our collaborative effort with the East Granby Public Schools for providing breakfast and lunch to East Granby students is going very well. For the month of February, and remember we haven't had that many days in February, we provided 1,046 breakfasts, breakfasts, tough word, <laughs> breakfasts to East Granby and 1,006 lunches to East Granby. So I want to remind the board and the public that this is a pilot program, and I want to thank our administration, Mrs. Robbins, and our Fresh Picks and the East Granby administration for this collaborated effort. It's an exciting time, and you can see that we are definitely moving in the right direction. In your packet tonight, you have a publication from the Connecticut Association of Public School Superintendents called the CAPS Blueprint to Transform Connecticut Public Schools. This has been presented to the, the governor and our state legislative body. So you may hear our senators and representatives referring to that this evening. Kelly Lane and Wells Road students celebrated the 100th day of school last week on February 10th. I actually was able to attend the 101 day at Kelly Lane and just some of the outfits that the teachers were wearing and the spirit that is happening at Kelly Lane is incredible. I want to congratulate and honor the Middle School Student Council collected much needed items for the Granby Food Pantry and filled Mr. Pickard's pickup truck. Today, I met with Sandy Yost, the Director of Senior Services, and Amory Cox, who is the Director of Youth Service Bureau, to talk about forming a more detailed partnership with the Youth Service Bureau. The Granby Public Schools will be strengthening this partnership, and I've, I've asked Kim Calcasola, the High School Assistant Principal, and Heather Tannis, the Middle School Assistant Principal, who will serve as members of the YSB board to make sure that we have a, some an alignment between the schools in the YSB. Interviews will start next week for our director of pupil services. There will be a superintendent community conversation held on Wednesday, February 24th from 8.30 to 9.30, we'll be adjusting that, or from 9 to 10, we'll be adjusting that time and sending a new time out to families, recognizing that some families are driving their kids to school. So we're gonna change that time. And we'll also attend the PTO meeting in March and a combined middle school, high school PAC meeting in April to discuss the budget with parents. I also want to let the board know that on tonight's agenda, you have the approval of a graduation date. As you may have heard yesterday, the governor is loosening some restrictions on outdoor events and indoor events. We don't know what those specific guidelines will be when we have graduation in June, but you might have heard that on March 19th, that the outside rate will be up to around 200. So I can only hope that 
we will be able to do something more than we did last year for this year's senior class. But at this time, we're really not sure what the, the guidelines would be regarding anything related to graduation or anything related to prom or anything related to picnics. And we'll begin to communicate that out if, if the board approves the date of the graduation. I also want to let the, the board know that we did have to have um, some remote uh, school days due to inclement weather. And as you know that we may be seeing some inclement weather this week also uh, tomorrow and Friday. So we'll have to see. Not as you know, not every day is guaranteed a remote day due to inclement weather. I have many options such as early dismissal, uh, no school, late arrival, and a, a remote day. So those are decisions that I need to make. Also, there will be a Board of Finance meeting on Monday, February 22nd. This is a regular scheduled meeting. Anna Robbins and I plan to attend, and I'm assuming Mrs. Emery may be able to be there also. The next regular scheduled board meeting will be held on Wednesday, March 3rd. And please note that the administrative budget will be presented at this meeting. At this time, I'll entertain any questions out of the superintendent's office. Thank you, Dr. Grossman. And I bet that 100 day celebration certainly looked a lot different a year into the pandemic than it did a year ago. So um, pretty great to have that. Any questions for Dr. Grossman, Mark? I have a question, Dr. Grossman. you mind if I go sit in that empty desk over there? <laughs> No, Can permission to move. <laughs> permission granted. <laughs> do you have a microphone over there, Mark? Yep. That answers so that. Jake, if you could Jacob, take that you can grab that microphone. If Brandy comes, I'll go back. Anything else for Dr. Grossman? I can't see Jenny. Oh, there you are. Jenny, are you all set? She's good. She waved you on. Oh, waved on. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Grossman. Schools in the spotlight. Tonight we have Brandon Memorial High School staff and students here to talk a little bit about what virtual events in the high school look like. So, welcome to the stage. Thank you very much and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's great to see everybody this evening and thank you for this opportunity to showcase some really exciting things that have been going on at Grammy Memorial High School or at Grammy Memorial High School virtually. Uh, and a welcome to Senators Whitcoast and Kissel and to Representative Anderson. Uh, and it's great to have you be part of this as well. So uh, we've got some exciting things. I'm very pleased to turn things over in just a second to our experts who have been uh, coming up with all kinds of ways to continue activities uh, creatively this year, uh, especially through virtual activities at Grand Memorial High School. We're going to be uh, showcasing and, and focusing on two main uh, activities. One is our new Bears Broadcast Club, uh, and the other one is a virtual version of our Poetry Out Loud celebration that we've had for several years. Um, and so this, uh, if you tuned in over the weekend to uh, boys basketball, if you tuned in to our music uh, concert, which was wonderful, and I know the last time we were here showcasing uh, was with music in the time of COVID, uh, and we have Another person here, Nick Boyd, who has been part of that as well. He's going to be, he's played a, a major role with uh, making this prepared broadcast come to life as well. And just tonight, we had our uh, girls basketball game live streamed out to the community. And that's the work of the Barrett Broadcast Club. And I'm pleased to be joined by Mr. Brian Montessi, as well as with Nick Boyd and Owen Denke, who's really taken the lead on that. Also with us, and I'm very honored to be on the stage with Mrs. Lauren Schaefer, who's done so much with our Poetry Out Loud program. Uh, that has been something that has usually involved bringing the whole school community here in this uh, space. And this year, we had to do things more uh, in, in a different way and more creatively. And thanks to Mrs. Schaefer and to some of her representatives, we have uh, Linus and Friar Waskin, as well as Chase McGee. Uh, and they will be showcasing uh, some of the work that they've been doing this year to keep that wonderful program alive. So without further ado, I'm going to please turn it over to Mr. Montessi and the Bears broadcast for me. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for, for having us here. Um, as the old saying goes, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So 
You know, the pandemic hit. Unfortunately, we, we lost our spring season last year in 2020, um, but we were able to open up successfully in the fall in our schools. To open up successfully, we were able to offer um, interscholastic athletics. Um, however, certain restrictions were put into place which didn't allow us to have the same type of atmosphere that we would have in our game. We had to limit the amount of spectators that we that we could have. <laughs> so, uh, in walks to my office, Mr. Nick Boyd and Mr. Owen Danke to try to talk about a live streaming option that we could have at the high school, um, which would entail being able to get the fans the athletic events that we needed. So absolutely, um, you know, they kind of blew me away with the, with the stuff they were doing and that they were talking about, um, and what you're gonna see in some of the slides and some of the stuff they're gonna talk about. But with the help of the Granby High School Booster Club and the Granby Education Foundation, we are able to fund the equipment that they have, which is state of the art. Um, and again, like Mr. Don had mentioned, if you watched any of the, the games previously or you watched the basketball game on Friday, basketball game today, um, and just hearing some of the uh, other schools that are also watching it, because um, we stream it on YouTube, some of the other schools stream it on uh, the National Federation of High Schools, which uh, does have a little bit of a, a subscription fee to it. We offer for free, but we have live play-by-play, play-by-play action. Um, so just some of the feedback I've been getting from um, some of the people is that uh, our broadcast is second to none. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Nick and Owen just to talk about um, everything they've done to get this up and running. Um, and again, it's just a, it's a testament to their, you know, obviously knowledge and hard work and dedication to the Grammy Public School District and the students and family. Thank you. So we feel that uh, the Bears Broadcast Club was a perfect meeting of uh, opportunity and interest from students. So. We found that we were a little bit worried because we weren't going to be able to watch all of the sporting events like we wanted to senior year. So we felt sad that we weren't going to be able to watch them. And then we thought, hey, maybe we could live stream it. So coming together, Owen and I thought up a couple of things. We could use cameras, connected to computers, and then we could show it to people. And of course, we were able to talk to Mr. Maltesi and put it together. And honestly, it was really fun being able to find other people who are as interested in this as Owen and I am, and find a community of students who are not only passionate, but um, excited about getting excited about getting all of our school's events online. So we feel this is an opportunity that is only available at Granby. Uh, we've had incredible support from the GEF, incredible support from the Boosters Club, and the athletics department in general. Um, the athletics department did uh, support us in the beginning with uh, Quick money so that we could get off the ground for the first uh, for the first game, and then from there we took off running. Um, we got every single home game from the fall sports season where there was not rain. So uh, anytime equipment could get wet, we tried to avoid that. Um, and now we're coming up on the winter sports season where we have been doing basketball games. We actually just came back for one and a half an hour ago, still wearing my press mask. Um, but honestly, it's super fun. We've had an incredible reaction from the student body. Everybody's watching it. And not only has this equipment been used for sports, but it's also been used for the arts. Uh, one of our demos, which we will show, is from Coffee House. Uh, you can click the next slide if you'd like. Um, yes, so we did use this equipment to put on live music events. We've also used the same cameras to record the choir and put on a virtual singing Valentine's, which is like a choir gram sent to somebody you care about. So if you'd like to talk about all the all right, um, we're going to play the uh, sports clip. Bottom right, yeah. That's Josh's first of the game. All right, the ball is inbound. Smith has it. Going baseline, shoots, misses. Rebound. Goodrow. Comes half court, sees the gray. The gray on the baseline. Reverse layup. Beautiful, beautiful right. shot. <laughs> So uh, that's a bit of uh, some of our work with the sports. Um, that's what we've done. Uh, initially, we started out as just myself, Nick, and uh, his brother, Cooper. Uh, we started with that bit of money from the athletics department, uh, going to uh, soccer and field hockey games. Uh, 
just to see, you know, what we needed to do uh, and how we could progress uh, just to get like a feel of it. And eventually, uh, we made a list of stuff we uh, felt uh, we required uh, and applied for a grant, which eventually led to uh, us being able to film a basketball game uh, like we just saw. Um, now, in terms of uh, coffee house uh, and musical performances, that's its, uh, its own separate category because rather than filming uh, fast paced motion, we're filming uh, a stationary band and the audio is very important. So uh, we worked uh, in this auditorium with uh, James Akatura uh, and Elliot Bosak to uh, really get the audio where we wanted it to be and send it out on the uh, YouTube live stream. Uh, we mixed it just for that and we were getting the lights set up so the cameras could see uh, what they could see, um, what they needed to see and uh, have the uh, audience who is not uh, able to be there view their uh, kids and their friends performing uh, some very uh, uh, excellent music. Gonna play that clip now. That's all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my a little bit of uh, what we've been doing uh, so far this school year uh, in terms of the uh, air broadcast uh, plus group uh, work. And I now I'll just turn it over to the Yes, sir. If I may say one more thing. Um, we are working on uh, educating the new generation of broadcasters at Granby so that what Owen and I do hopefully graduate in the next year. Um, we have many other classroom students that continue to make this a service, even in non COVID times. It's incredibly useful as game film. It's incredibly useful to show the parents what student athletes are doing, what student musicians are doing, um, what the theater is doing, like what drama production we're having in the school. So it's been an incredible resource and honestly something great that's not our team. So, and now I'd like to welcome the Poetry Out Loud crew to the stage. Before I uh, introduce Linus, Linus is actually a uh, part of the Barrett Broadcast crew as well as, uh, as, well as Brother Pryor, and they also are participants in Poetry Out Loud. So, Linus can say a couple words about his experience with Coffee House and the transition. Hey, um, <laughs> Um, thank you. Um, coffee House, I gotta say, at the beginning of the year, I really did not expect it to happen. There was so much that was shut down, and I just didn't see anything getting better anytime soon. I thought that it just was not an option. Uh, but somehow, Nick Boyd and the news have managed to, um, they, they managed to get a live stream set up. So not only did we get to have podcasts, but we had to we get uh, we got to have it live. It was really incredible. And um, building off of what Nick said earlier, um, this is not only was incredibly useful this year for when we uh, were not able to have a lot of people uh, move together, but and this has huge implications for like the future of what we can do if there's a uh, Maybe for some reason, like maybe there's a huge snowstorm on the day of like a, like a big sporting event, and a lot of babies maybe can't make it. Um, you know, we, we can just set up a live stream for it, and people can watch it at home. It says so much more. Uh, there, there's so much more that we can do with this than just uh, prevent people from like, getting COVID and stuff. There, uh, there's, there's a lot. And it's, it's, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. Because, um, yeah. It was almost not quite significant. It's it's really incredible when it's done, and it's incredible to think of the future. It's 
speaking of things that we have done, uh, poetry out loud is usually a school wide event that um, we get to bring the whole school together. It's a ton of fun. People read poetry, we all snap. It's, it's, it's just lovely. Um, and we actually managed to do that as well this year. Uh, so, Thank you, Lyon. Uh, so I think we're ready for the Poetry Out Loud slide, the next one. Okay, so hi, everybody. Um, I'm definitely used to addressing audiences in different places this year. So looking at people on the stage, looking at the, at the camera, looking at the booth, and I'll try to make eye contact with different places. Um, I'm just going to speak real briefly because we've got wonderful students here tonight who can tell you a lot more about the program. But just, um, if you're not familiar with it, you need a refresher. Um, poetry Out Loud is a national poetry recitation program that grandy has been involved with since 2016. And it's been a very successful program at the high school. I'm just um, very, we've been really fortunate in the English department to have support from across our, our whole CMHS community. And we've actually had one of the largest uh, participation rates in the state. In the, in the past. Um, you're going to hear more about how, how that works in our school um, shortly. Um, so the program is you know, obviously designed to for, for the kids to uh, be encouraged to develop their public speaking skills and, of course, their study and appreciation of poetry. And the study and appreciation of poetry certainly has continued this year, but we weren't able to do uh, a lot of the in-person events. And so um, we've made some adjustments. And I'm going to have Faith McGee, who um, is going to speak now. And you're going to hear from him twice this evening. Um, Faith is going to talk about he's taking he needs some things refreshed, and I don't want to take his, his thunder away. Um, and Chase is going to be doing something for the very first time tonight on this stage with this camera for the 2021 version of Poetry Out Loud. You're all going to get to experience that. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Schaefer, for that suspenseful drop. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm first going to start by talking about uh, how we've done Poetry Out Loud in the past. So um, it's been going on for quite some time here. And uh, I've been a part of it these past four years. Um, and yeah, we really value participation and you know, encouragement of peers. So yeah, we have every student in our uh, English classes choose a poem, so you get a, a wide variety of uh, recitations in terms of length, genre, time period. Uh, and so we have a little class competition um, where everyone recites in front of the class. And we move on to grade level competitions, which are here in the auditorium. And finally, we have a school competition. Um, and it's, it's really a, a lovely event to see in person. We have this whole auditorium filled. Um, uh, the amazing basketball coach, uh, Mr. Hansen, uh, MCs, he knows how to engage the crowd and uh, you know get the, the spectators uh, excited, but also respectful of their peers. Um, so it's really uh, amazing event. And so finally, that uh, school winner moves on to a state competition in which they recite two poems, one that's 25 lines or fewer, uh, and the other's uh, pre 20th century poem. And then finally, there's a uh, national competition in Washington, DC. Uh, this lovely one day event, the whole day, uh, it's, it's really interesting to watch. So I'm going to hand it over to Pryor who wants to talk about what we've done to adapt this year. Uh, so this year, as much as we wanted to, it wasn't really feasible to have an auditorium full of kids screaming for poetry. Uh, <laughs> however, of course, there was no way that our English department would give up on such a well-loved and exciting school tradition such as Poetry Out Loud. 
So although we didn't get, you know, the 100% participation rate that we have had in previous years, uh, we did hold a smaller virtual school-wide competition. And so uh, this was run through the Poetry Club, uh, which is hosted by Mrs. Schaefer and Miss Quinn. So they got everyone that was interested in poetry out loud together. They you know, sent out emails, made announcements, and made sure that anybody who wanted to do poetry uh, would be at this meeting. And they said, you know what? You kids are excited and passionate about poetry, and we want to let you compete. And we want to let you go through this experience of finding a poem and researching it and annotating it and practicing performing it. And it is really an honor to have uh, English teachers that care this much about things that are not just in the curriculum, but things that go beyond. Uh, so I was one of the contestants. Unfortunately, I was the runner-up. But <laughs> there's no shame in that. Runner-up is a great place to be in. So um, to give you uh, an example of how we ran it, um, there is a video that I would like to show on this next slide. And this was my submission. Um, it's a poem about teaching and education. And I, I didn't realize how uh, appropriate it would be for this when I picked it, but it seemed to work out well. So yes, these are the, the video submissions that we used for the online Poetry Out Loud competition. Undivided Attention by Taylor Malley. A grand piano wrapped in quilted pads by movers, tied up with canvas straps, like classical music's birthday gift to the criminally insane, is gently nudged without its legs out an eighth floor window on 62nd Street. It dangles in the April air from the neck of the mover's crane, Chopin shiny black lacquer squares and dirty white crisscross patterns hanging like the second to last note of a concerto, played on the edge of the seat, the edge of tears, the edge of eight stories up going over. It's a piano being pushed out of a window and lowered down onto a flatbed truck. And I'm trying to teach math in the building across the street. Who can teach when there are such lessons to be learned? All the greatest common factors are delivered by long-necked cranes and flatbed trucks or come through everything even air, like snow. See, snow falls for the first time every year, and every year my students rush to the window as if snow were more interesting than math, which, of course, it is. So please, let me teach like a Steinway. Spinning slowly in April air, so almost falling. So hinderingly dangling from the neck of the mover's crane. So on the edge of losing everything. Let me teach like the first snow. So, you know, um, that was just a, a little taste of what you're about to get right now. Um, because Chase is our school championship, he is moving on to the larger competition, the state competition. Right. Regional, my bad. <laughs> regional competition first. But he's moving on to the regional competition, and for that, too, he has to submit a video and 
what you're going to see right now is Chase recording that video that he is going to submit to the state competition. So have fun. <laughs> Wide Receiver by Mark Allen. In the huddle, you said, go long, get open. And at the snap, I took off along the right sideline and then cut across left in a long arc, and I'm sure I was open at several points. Glancing back, I saw you pump fake more than once, but you must not have been satisfied with what you saw downfield. Then I got bumped off course, and my hands touched the turf, but I regained my balance and then dashed back to the right, I think, or maybe first left and then right. And I definitely got open, but the throw never came. Maybe you thought I couldn't hang on to a ball one so far, or maybe you actually can't throw so far. But in any case, I feel quite open now. The defenders don't seem interested in me. I sense only open air all around me, though the air is getting darker, and it would appear by now that we're well into the fourth quarter, and I strongly doubt we can afford to settle for dinky little first down to the sort of what I think it is. So come on, star boy, fling a Hail Mary with a dream coach combination of muscle and faith, and I will gauge the up, and I will not be stupidly frantic, and I will time my jump, and I'm just going to say, in the cool gloaming of this weirdly long game, it is not impossible that I will make the catch. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, we have some time for some questions if you have for the next slide. And I'd like to invite everybody back up and take a lot of questions uh, for any of our virtual. <laughs> Broadcaster and poets. Great. Thank you. Wonderful job for everybody. And I love to think about people freely for poetry. And the shape thank you for bringing that to our school. You know, it certainly has made my thoughts over the past four years. So, um, to all of us, that's a blessing. Thank you. Any questions or comments for our broadcast and our poetry? Yes, thank you, Melissa. Wow. Um, thank you for. Oh, it's not on. That's why it's not working. Hello. Yeah, you're good. Thank you for your initiative in starting the very broadcast club and poetry out loud continues on with resilience and just so impressive. So impressive. Thank you. Am I on? Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, uh, you are a very talented and innovative group of uh, kids, and uh, because of you, our future is bright. Uh, one thing I wanted to um, just throw at you, I am so glad, Nick, that you mentioned that you are looking for your future uh, uh, broadcasters to take your place when you, um, when you move on uh, to greener pastures. Um, also, I wanted to suggest maybe uh, looking at the community at large in terms of your audience, um, yes, uh, we're all Brandy Bears and we, we love to watch the musical performances and the sporting events, but there are seniors out there who are our taxpayers and who, um, you know, their taxes go to what we do here in school. And I think that they would really love to see what is going on in our schools because this is really phenomenal work that you're all doing and I think it would make them very proud uh, to know that their taxpayer dollars are going to such um, such great students and such great learning and I forgot who said you know not only in the classroom and curriculum based but but things that are going on outside so thank you very much for what you're doing and keep doing it thank you and I can't see if there's anyone in the Zoom world. If Jenny's up there, I know Jenny usually likes to. Or is Jack here too? Any comments out there, Jenny? Or no, it's just uh, very, just great stuff. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I would also like to commend you guys. I think this is a, a tremendous opportunity, even post-COVID. Uh, just think about all the, the friends and families who are not 
able to come to games or other events that might be able to otherwise access them. And I think that's just a really exciting opportunity for the future. And uh, congratulations, awesome job. I'll echo that too, Dave, because my mother is in Maine and has been for a year and a half, and uh, she hasn't missed a concert or a sporting event, and she just really loves it. So it really is really part of our town of Ramsey. So thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Um, that's certainly one of the things that drove us to do this. Uh, even if COVID was out of uh, the question, I was certainly hoping that other students would have taken some of our initiative to uh, try and get our events out into the community. And uh, we have done some events posted towards uh, the community more, such as the senior men's breakfast. Uh, I know that we used our equipment to uh, broadcast that. Uh, it was a Zoom call, it was a really nice event. And the singing Valentine's have reached far to the community, but uh, we certainly do hope to show more sports, more arts, and more of our school in general to our town. Okay. Awesome. Anything else for our students? No, thank you all. I'm just gonna lead another round of Thank you very much, and um, I hope you to today. Another thing to do tonight, you are welcome to speak. You're welcome to stay. Um, sure. Whatever you're But thank you for being here tonight. Wonderful. So, with that, we move on to our guest legislators. And I know we have Senator Kissel and Senator Wickhouse um, on our Zoom call. Uh, and that we also have uh, Representative Mark Anthony here in the house. So, um, I don't think we have any real format for this other than just to let you guys kind of speak. And I know our board has some questions that they'd like to ask. Um, I'm sure that they certainly do. So Representative Anderson, since you're here in the house, I'd have to be happy to give you the floor. Thank you. So uh, I had a pleasure to hear and watch the high school's virtual concert this past weekend. Um, it brought warmth on a cold winter weekend. Um, Shlansky is doing amazing work for the music program. I got to hear the broadcast crew, athletic director, and the poetry in person. It was great. Um, the last Wednesday, the governor presented his budget. Um, and to dig into it. It looks like he wants to level fund the, EC, the education funding. Um, and the number I found was 5.28 million. I think that's similar for the next few years um, to what you had the last couple of years. Um, I'm told that we will probably only get the budget no more than 12 hours before we have to vote on it or debate it. And we probably won't be looking at it until the second week of June, possibly. So we'll see what happens when the budget comes into contact with the legislature. Um, I'm not on the education committee, but I took a look at all the pending bills in it, uh, education related uh, today, and I came up, there's 184. Um, so far, 24 of these have been raised by the committee to be drafted into legal language and be considered for a public hearing. Um, I would encourage members of the Board of Ed, members of the public and students, when these bills are like five days out from a hearing, you'll get a heads up that you can submit written testimony and you can sign up on Zoom and that has a big impact on what happens to legislation, makes it better or gets approved, not approved but the quantity and quality of your input can be tremendous. Um, if you're on my email list, uh, I'll send info on some of the bills, uh, go to email, and you should CC me and the senators for the district um, on your testimony so we see it. So I looked at the 24 bills that have been raised so far, and they should get your attention just to highlight some of the topics. Um, an act concerning education cost-sharing grant and funding of small towns. An act concerning minimum budget requirement, uh, educator preparation, special ed, virtual learning, an act concerning the development of a kindergarten to 12th grade model curriculum, uh, act concerning high school graduation requirements, an act concerning school security, an act concerning emergency action plan for interscholastic and intramural athletic events, an act concerning charter schools. And then possibly the most controversial act concerning regional cooperation among school districts. There is a bill, and I'm not sure if it's that one, because these aren't numbers, usually they are, Senate Bill 253, which was introduced by um, Senator Looney, who's the president of the Senate. So that would imply that it has a high chance of going somewhere. And I don't know how much this would affect Grandy. Um, but. Uh, 
It would amend the general statutes to reduce the percentage a town may receive for a school building project grant by 20 points if the town has fewer than 25,000 residents, is not a member of a regional school district, and contains a high school, is under the jurisdiction of a local board of education. Uh, purpose to encourage school districts to regionalize by reducing reimbursement percentage for a school building project grant for certain towns. So I don't know if you have any projects, building projects in the future, but there will be a push again, which has been in past years towards regionalization. Uh, but that's all I have for now. Thank you. Um, I think I'll just move on to Senator Kissel. I think I saw you up there. You'd like to go and then uh, Senator Whitcoast, whenever you'd like to chime in. Um, perhaps you guys have something coordinated, I don't know. <laughs> but, and then we'll, ask, we'll answer questions after. So Senator Kissel? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be brief. First of all, I'm very proud of all your students. That was a great presentation. Uh, the administrators, the teachers, and all you wonderful public servants that volunteer so many hours for the school system. Uh, Granby does have a great school system and it's very evident when I come and visit uh, year after year. Uh, I don't sit on the education committee. Uh, we essentially just started, we're doing our hearings via Zoom, uh, just like this evening and, and this meeting. Uh, I do sit on uh, the Judiciary Committee, the General Law Committee with Senator Whitcoast, uh, Transportation Committee, and um, my new assignment is Regulations Review, which apparently meets every month throughout the year, and I'm on four subcommittees of that. So I'm keeping pretty busy. We've already had one hearing that went 10 hours and another hearing that went 12. Uh, highly controversial about wine in supermarkets. <laughs> and the other one that went 10 was about bicycle safety in urban areas, because apparently a lot of accidents are taking place in, in the city of New Haven. Uh, so I'm here to listen. I'm here to learn. Happy to answer any questions to the extent that I can, but I'm always so happy to be able to represent Granby and, and all you great people. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Thanks, Senator uh, Thanks, Sarah. It's a pleasure to be here, uh, albeit uh, via computer. But congratulations to the, the Bears Broadcast Club for bringing the community of Granby out to the extended community, to the, everybody who's interested in following uh, all the activities at Granby Memorial High School, and to the, the Poet Laureates for their, their presentations this evening. It's This is one of the great parts about being an elected official when you get to see talent, you know, up up front and personal, right in front of your eyes. Uh, so Mark hit a lot of the things. Uh, your, your budget amount is the same. That's in the governor's budget, what what you, you can expect. And it's based on the formula. There's no change to the formula. Uh, I looked through the governor's uh, bill, 67 pages. There's a, a not much changes in there. There's some conforming language for the Chef versus O'Neill um, <clears throat> lawsuit to uh, continue that if the commissioners deems it appropriate. There's a pilot program for the Darien Norwalk School Public Schools, uh, but other than that, and then there's a increase in the dollar amount for students for the charter schools. Uh, went up like 300 bucks per student, so that's pretty much all that the governor has in his bills. And as far as the education committee goes, you know I don't serve on education. I serve on the higher education workforce development. But I will share with you that uh, this committee historically, I, I served on education. Uh, uh, one year in the general assembly and they they seem to doesn't matter who the chairs and the ranking members are they follow the pattern that they never raise anyone's individual bill they always raise committee concepts and that's uh i think what mark was referring to if you look at their their uh, bill record book there's there are concepts that were raised i think there's 28 of them as, as mark had the correct number and those uh, are empty shells but you kind of can figure out from the title what they may be trying to accomplish but again it's hard to understand until you have the public hearing what it is that they're trying to accomplish so those um those will be filled in before the public hearing there's not one set yet so this committee i'm kind of surprised um with a lot of focus on uh, uh <clears throat> working in a um either a hybrid in person or remote atmosphere really for the first year that uh, this committee hasn't really gotten going uh <clears throat> to address some of these issues one of the other things i, I that i hear about a lot uh and really was a push from the CEA is to make sure that teachers 
are accounted as essential workers uh, for vaccinations. And the governor did announce at his press conference. Uh, so sometime in the next 10 days, he'll be announcing when the next round of vaccinations uh, are for, for essential workers and those with comorbidities and teachers will be included in that round. So feel free to share that you know, with your staff. I'm sure they'll be elated to hear that. So um, <clears throat> uh, that's one good thing. The other good thing I, I'd say is that I seem to s sense more participation from legislators uh, because there's no commuting time for any of us to get to Hartford. That we're signing on early, they're staying late. You know, the public health committee just concluded a, a, a meeting, a 24 hour hearing, which they had to cut it off and they only had 220 people testified out of the 2,000 people that signed up for it. So this may be an issue that, you know, if it does come to pass and get signed into law that uh, you as a board will have to determine how you're going to address this. And that is the uh, removal of the religious exemption for vaccinations. Um, and it basically says that a student, uh, in, if does not up to the local board of education, but they don't have to be admitted into a public school if they're not vaccinated. Uh, so that's something that you, your board will probably have to grapple with because I tell you, folks from all over the state were testifying, were had signed up to testify. So it's not isolated in just the urban areas. It's it's everywhere. Uh, but I'd be more than happy to answer anybody's questions. Glad to be here uh, today and um, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Wittkowski. Thank you to all three of you for your hours and hours of service. Um, 10 and 12 hour hearings are, are a big commitment, I know. So any questions, comments that we can um, Ask our elected officials. I see Mark reaching for his microphone. Yeah, if I can figure out how to turn it on. <laughs> we can hear you, Mark. <laughs> thank you. First of all, I want to uh, thank all three of you. Um, you've always been very, very accessible to us and um, willing to answer phone calls and answer texts and get on emails. We're very grateful for the time that you spend in supporting us. And I, I think the last time that I participated in this discussion, it'll, it'll probably sound like a broken record with me anyway. Um, we're grateful for the, what the legislature does, but ask you to be mindful that um, what we really don't need is any more unfunded mandates. And um, to the extent that you can help us um, work through these issues with the, the folks who are on the education <laughs> committee, um, because it, we're on the front line trying to implement the things you're, that you're, you're asking us to do. Uh, and for the most part, I would say it's rare that the, the, the committee will uh, introduce a subject that we haven't already discussed and, and, and working on, where we can provide a, a great deal of background on what's working and what's not working and possibly make the process more efficient. One example I would give you is we shared with each of you our, our equity and diversity plan. So these are things that we're already thinking about. So as you address these subjects in the legislature, not that one, just that one, but any of them, please just keep doing what you're doing and uh, be available to us so we can we can tell you how uh, what we think is working and what's not working. So thank you. You're welcome. And I think as uh, Senator Kissel had pointed out, it's so important for uh, if you have the opportunity, because it's a little bit easier now since all of our public hearings are uh, done virtually, to uh, sign up for a <clears throat> the day that you can testify and give the real life example of what's going on in your school district, what you're doing in anticipation of whether it's a social justice issue or whether it's a mandated curriculum, how you're trying to incorporate all of these different things. Because at some point, if the legislature had their way, you wouldn't be able to teach anything because we, we, we would be prescribing to you exactly what you're being taught in, in your school districts, uh, just because it happened to be the topic du jour of that particular year. And folks just want to make sure that that's added to the curriculum. So I think it's so important uh, if you have the opportunity uh, to sign up, you can uh, just kind of keep it on in the background, but they want it. They need to hear, they need to hear uh, from folks about how important it is and how the, it impacts you. I know in the past people say, well, just submit some written testimony. That's fine. But if you can get online and, and testify and answer some questions from the legislators, that really carries a lot more weight. Yeah. Melissa, Rosemary, Dave, questions or comments? Dave, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was wondering if any of you had any uh, thoughts on what we should be looking for in a new uh, state commissioner of education. Hmm. 
Who wants but, to take that one? <laughs> as you know, it's, it's the governor's pick. Um, and so I, I think that he's going to look for um, uh, a minority. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, and you know, actually, I, I, if I had my choice, I, I like um, Superintendent Rodriguez from the Hartford Public Schools. I think she's got some vision uh, to, uh, that could move the state forward as a whole. Uh, she's making leaps and bounds in the Hartford Public School systems, what she has to work with. But uh, it's, it'll be the governor's uh, choice, and that, that choice will be referred to the Executive and Legislative Nominations Committee, where the legislature will vote to confirm uh, he or she is a commissioner, and we'll go forward. But, um, uh, you know, I think, uh, uh, Commissioner, if you had a chance to watch any of the confirmation hearings down in Washington, D.C., uh, former Commissioner Cardona uh, really did our state proud by his performance during those uh, those hearings. So I think that the governor would probably look for somebody along those same uh, ideologies and, um, and energy and commitment. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Nicholas. Anybody, Jenny, did, did I see your face. Do you have any comments or questions for legislators? I, not, well, I, I'm just sitting here thinking about, uh, on one hand, how um, uh, proud we are in Granby of um, how we've tackled um, COVID. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but we've been open since early September and um, other than a couple of uh, short-term one school at a time closures, um, our kids and teachers have been in school throughout the entire process. Um, uh, and we um, have done it without breaking the bank. Um, we returned money to the town last year. So uh, it, it can be done. And, I, and, and then when I hear that there are proposals, uh, I'm a big believer in regionalization uh, regional efforts, but when I hear about um, proposals at the state level that would target well-run districts like ours um, uh, with financial penalties, um, it just seems like it just totally misses the mark. And so um, I guess we'll just have to keep our eye on that and and, uh, and hope that uh, um, better ideas come along for uh, how the state can incent school districts to work together rather than uh, penalti penalizing those that are working effectively. Thank you, Jenny. You know, the carrot's always better than the stick is what I always say. Uh, but kudos to you, the board, uh, Dr. Grossman, for his leadership and, uh, and all the staff and the students and the parents who want their kids in your school buildings. You know, I, Granby is one of the shining stars in the valley where, you know, your attendance rate amongst your students' population is so high, uh, that's fantastic. And that just shows the commitment from, from everybody as a community um, to promote uh, a, a fine educational system. And, 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 and between John and Mark and I, we will fight tooth and nail to make sure that we do not allow a mandated regionalization or the, or the takeaway from an excellent school system as a punishment for the job that you're doing. Thank you, Senator. I agree we are a shining star. So thank you for, for saying so. Any other final comments or questions um, from the board or if there are any questions or comments that um, our legislators have for us? Now just is keep, your time. Just keep up your great work. Thank you. Well, thank you all again for joining us tonight. I'm thrilled that you were able to see such a wonderful display of student talent, uh, to see how schools are thriving um, despite all the challenges that COVID has brought us um, and that we definitely have certainly made lemonade out of lemons, as the boys said earlier. So uh, we're, we're doing a great job. Uh, thank you for being here. I would be remiss if I did not give you the opportunity to log off or to uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Yep. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yep. Representative Anderson, you also have that, that leave if you'd like to take thank leave. You. Okay, thank you. Yeah. If anything comes up, don't hesitate to reach out to my office. Thank you very much, Senator. And with that, um, a great follow-up. We have Assistant Superintendent Jennifer Parsons with her uh, report. Good evening. I wanted to start by letting you know that we are in a really great place continuing to keep our schools in a full in-person return. 
Um, the past few weeks have seen very minimal to no impact with COVID on our school setting. And we would like to thank the community, the parents, the teachers, and uh, all of our um, all of our community members for really staying vigilant and staying home. And as we continue to deal with some community impact on the schools, um, the key part is really just making sure people aren't feeling well. If there are symptoms or testing going on, really just to stay home and that will continue to have little impact on our schools so that we can stay open. Um, we continue to welcome students back into the school buildings from the remote cell setting. And the last opportunity for that for our elementary students will be on March 8th, where we plan on um, welcoming just, um, just under 10 students back into the school building from the remote environment. We continue to prepare for vaccine distribution and working with the Farmington Valley Health District so that when teachers are called up for their turn, we are ready to um, support their registration in VAM and to support Farmington Valley Health uh, District with, with their clinic. One of the things I wanted to update the board on was the teacher residence program, the minority teacher in residence program, as a result of our conversation at the last board meeting. Um, I had the opportunity to speak to our representative at CREC, who is manning, um, is taking the charge of this program. And just as to recap, um, the program involves a minority teacher candidate who already has a bachelor's degree. And they would spend a school year worth the time in the classroom with a trained mentor teacher, but 18 months in post-grad classes. So that's the Arc Lake program where they would be getting their teacher certification um, in addition to their bachelor's degree. There would be two summers of wraparound classes. So teacher candidates would start this summer with classes, all of next school year in a classroom, follow up the following summer with classes, and then that second full school year, we would hopefully be able to offer them a position in our district. So they would be a full teacher, uh, teaching staff member at that time. So what is happening right now is that PREC and the other refs are gathering and vetting applicants. So they are going to do a preliminary um, vetting of all applicants. Following that, there'll be a resident selection day where we will be able to meet our brand new candidates. And from there, we will select a candidate to pair with one of our team certified teachers in district in grades one through five. There will be an inherent commitment for the first 18 months through that program. But then following that, what um, is being designed is MOU type language, so memorandum of understanding type language. Um, that will be a three year mutual commitment, but non binding. So that, would, that three year commitment would start at the beginning of the second school year when the teacher was in their own class. And the three year would also involve CREC in that they would be supporting the teacher and continuing to provide supports, networking, and incentives for the teachers um, as they embark in the first few years of teaching within their own classroom. Just as a reminder, um, the fees here involve about $47,000 for the teacher that first year while they're in the classroom and benefits. It's a $9,000 tuition fee paid for their classes, as well as a stipend fee for our um, cooperating teacher that would be paired with them in the classroom. The second school year, they would come onto our payroll as a teaching staff member. And we continue to look for ways to offset the cost of this program, um, including grants, um, both that we can apply for and that the program itself is going to continue to, to apply for. So that's my update on the Minority Teacher in Residence Program. And I don't know if there's any additional questions from the board. Melissa? Thank you, General. Thanks, Jen. A um, question on the teacher vaccine rollout. Is this something that the Farmington Valley Health District is going to coordinate? Or like, I know this is very preliminary, but um, the governor announced that there'll be a 22% increase in the number of vaccines available starting next week. My own personal optic is we're going to see supply chains really start to get where they need to go. So is, how is that going to coordinate you know, our teachers? So as the school district, we sort of have two, two main responsibilities in the coordination. One is that we have to up, we upload all of our staff into VAM, the Vaccine Administration Management Portal. And from there, teachers have to create an account. And they can then go from that point into choosing any available vaccine appointment that is out in the public domain. 
But what we are working on, I've been working with colleagues um, in similar positions across other districts, mainly Canton and Simsbury as well. Um, and so what we're doing is we're creating a sign-up system for teachers so that when Farmington Valley has clinics that they can dedicate to education staff, I should, I should retract, it's not just teachers, education staff. So when Farmington Valley has an allocation of vaccine that can, can be directed toward education staff, we will have a way for teachers to register directly for those clinics instead of having to go into the VAMS portal and sort of fight for spots out um, in the general public. So that's our two main roles that we're saying as a school system is to number one, upload them in VAMS to verify that they're a frontline essential worker. And then number two, to help communicate um, when Farmington Valley has vaccine that's allocated for education staff. Great, thanks for the initiative. the memorandum of understanding regarding the correct teacher, is that a model that everybody shares like the same MOU or does each town develop its own? So um, when I asked that question of it as to, they said they would be providing sample MOU type language, so nothing binding, but just really um, sort of a delineation of responsibilities and expectations. I believe they'll provide us with a sample, but I think we could probably bring that to the drawing board if we wanted to customize it for our district. Is there a way to write language that I'm almost thinking of like a major league baseball player where they have options, you know, option year, but is there a way to tighten the language where we have an option, uh, but they have less of one? It seems to me like, like if you do ROTC for four years, right, and the government pays for your college, like you owe the four years. If we pay for a year in this certification, is there a way to put in language where they sort of owe us a year? Or we, if we offer them a job, they need to take it as opposed to, well, thank you very much, Granby, but I got a job somewhere else and it's, you know, this much more or, or that kind of thing. Um, I will absolutely ask that question. I have a meeting um, for districts that are new to participating next year, um, next Friday, but I will absolutely bring that up. Thank you. Mark? Yeah, I have a couple, but thank you for the follow-up um, on that. So I just want to make sure I heard you right. So um, the teachers, when they're doing their in-class work, they're doing it in Grammy, right? Not that correct? So when they're doing their adult coursework, they're doing that at or through CREP. Right. Are the instructors for those graduate type level courses. When they're doing their practicum work in a classroom, they're doing that in Granby with a cooperating teacher for a full year. And then the second year they're coming into their own classroom. Okay. And they would start this summer in our summer school? Uh, the summer work is just the adult coursework. Oh, okay. So, so the, first, the first time they would be in our classrooms would be the beginning of the next school year? Correct. In July. Yeah. Okay. And then just a thought is, I'm very grateful for the work that you're doing, and I think a lot of this is still there developing. The, how do we work past the certification to, to manage everybody's expectations? Just the one thought I would have is that we, we should try to work with CREC at the very least to ensure that they don't hire the teachers for a period of time, right? Because we'll have a very difficult time competing with CREC salaries, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that was a simple smart. I actually brought that up Dave, to your question. I actually brought that up at a, a session with uh, Tim Sullivan and Greg Florio. So we have to get some more clarification with that of what rights districts have in, in this that we need that because they what i heard last year is that they can stay for a year and then they could go somewhere else this memorandum of understanding this is new language that i'm hearing now so this will be interesting is it a, a binding type of a memorandum of understanding but also as we know 10-year laws will still play an effect also we have to get some more clarification on us 
paying for something for a year and then people don't go run for another district such as crack doing their own in-house uh, recruiting uh, that would actually be bad business for crack if that's what they chose to do uh, because districts would just drop out left and right and i, and I understand these are complex issues yep. right? we, we want it to be a good fit for everybody that's right the last thing we want to do is last thing we don't want to do is unnecessarily restrict people but i think it's a relatively fair ask of crack to say if we're going to pay you to train these teachers you're going to commit for a period of time that you will kind of correct that, that would go a long way to accomplishing some of our goals I think. totally agree Jenny 57 any anything for assistance sure. okay Thank you very much. Um, student representative reports. I don't. I can't see if Jack DeGray is on um, the Zoom or not. So I'm going to turn it over to Jacob Scotto to start. And Jack, if you're on, make yourself known after Jacob is done with his report. Jack is not on. Oh. Basketball game. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's just not on. He's not on. Go ahead, David. Thank you. He didn't send his report, so I'll have to We'll take Great. Uh, good evening, everyone. Our students and faculty uh, enjoyed our long weekend and are very excited to be back in school and letting you get in the atmosphere to be energized and everybody is very welcoming and happy to be back. Our choir had a number of successes this week with their virtual singing Valentine's program where they sold over 100 virtual singing Valentine's to students who contributed them. Uh, to um, faculty uh, and other students, as well as grandparents, parents, and family members. The, our choir also had a virtual concert this week, both for the senior men's breakfast and it can be found online at their YouTube channel, um, GMS, GMHS Arts, and it currently has over 800 views. Our National Honor Society is running a food drive to help support the Grand Food Bank by gathering non perishable food items. And today is Random Acts of Kindness Day, and this week at the school is Random Acts of Kindness Week. So everybody is trying to be uh, as nice and welcoming as possible and just trying to bring a more positive atmosphere to the school. Thank you, Jacob. Questions? Um, hello? Oh, is that Jack? Oh, yes, I dialed in. Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting. That's okay, go right ahead. All right, so um, both the boys' and girls' basketball teams played last Friday, and they were both victorious against HMTCA. Um, a player, however, on the HMTCA boys' team did test positive on Saturday, and now every player from Granby that played in that game is quarantined until the 27th, including myself. Um, this was 9 out of 10 players, so we will have to uh, reschedule our next five games. The cheer team performed on Friday at the first home game and once again tonight, and they will continue to perform at all home games and practice during the week. And track and field has practiced all week since the beginning of the winter sports season. Thank you, Jack. Sorry That's to hear all. that. That's all. Thank you. Sorry to hear about your quarantine again. So questions or comments? <laughs> it's okay. Jack and or Jacob? Hockey team getting off the buses tonight. The Wildcats football hockey team was victorious this evening. So that's like breaking news from the parking lot here. Great news. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you both for your reports tonight. Um, is Anna up here? Yeah. Business manager's report. So tonight we are going to just talk about the January 2021 statement of accounts for results for financial results for January. Um, so after the receipt of grant funds, the general fund forecast is going to be $71,000. This forecast is worse than the previous month by $9,000. Special education is over budget, $139,000. Which is worse than the previous month by 18,000. 
But the regular education income fund has a positive forecast of sixty seven dollars and is better than the previous month by nine thousand. So the fluctuation in special education is driven by the students in that distribution. And the changes in regular education forecast are more needed adjustments to certified staff as we continue to monitor the ease of absences and personnel changes. Um, and these changes are also by anticipated savings in supplies, conferences, and travel, as well as student needs. Um, we're winding down this year, so we have five months remaining in school year. And so we can take all the fire of all the costs to be covered where possible by the age of the team. So this practice allows us to begin and even more active forecasting process for the general. The balance of the volume of the receipt fund is going to stay in its general value of $62,000. And the overall production of the revenue to the town is going to be over $1,000. Special education revenue from other towns continues with a positive forecast. And we did receive our first report of expense, updated expense. We can use this in calculating regular education tuition from other towns. So our regular education from other towns in Illinois is uh, already more favorable because our per pupil expense went from sixteen thousand nine fifty two to seventeen thousand sixteen dollars. Um, unfortunately, that factor also affects our uh, excess cost there. We reviewed this um, and just to uh, make the point again um, that we are, uh, thanks to some very uh, creative work with grants and um, good management, we're, despite the extra expenses of opening up and safely with COVID, we are ahead by, uh, we're almost $70,000 ahead in general ed and, um, and the deficit is um, more than driven by special ed. So um, uh, I think we've been doing, not we, the, the administration's been doing a great job. Thanks, Jenny. Anything for Mr. Robbins? Okay. Thank you, Anne. Okay. Moving on to public comment. I don't see anyone in house uh, for, the public, for the public comment. Is there anyone on Zoom who has indicated that they would like to um, be heard in public com comments. Just a reminder that we are limited by the Freedom of Information Act uh, to discussing only matters on the agenda. Anyone on Zoom interested in commenting? Okay. Last call. Great. Moving on to the consent agenda. Um, do I have a motion? I move that the Grand New Board of Education adopt the consent agenda. There a second. Sir. Dave, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Any opposed or abstentions? Brandon's not on the call, is he? No, okay. I keep looking, but I can't. Okay, great. And she carries. Old business. Um, FY22 budget update. Dr. Super, thank you, Sarah. Just want to let the board know that the superintendent's office and the business office and the rest of the administrative team is working diligently on our administrative budget for 21-22. And we've been working closely with the finance committee and also with our finance uh, board of finance for the town, really looking at the, the unofficial guideline and the board of finance is meeting on Monday and we'll really get an idea of what the official guideline will look at uh, at the Monday meeting. But I've been in constant communication with Chair Guarco 
who has been wonderful to work with during this uh, delicate process during this uh, tough economic climate. So I look forward to presenting the budget to you at the, the next meeting and I'll take any questions at this time. Thank you, Dr. Grossman. Just a reminder too, the presentation will be at our next board meeting and then the following uh, Wednesday will be our first budget board workshop on March, Wednesday, March 10th, I believe. Uh, questions for Dr. Grossman, Jenny? Uh, uh, not so much a question, but a comment. I, I don't know if everybody, maybe I only, I'm the only one who got it, but I had raised a question earlier on during the plus one. Um, I was interested in um, how the actual special ed expense had changed year over year versus the actual um, regular ed. So not what we budget, but what it actually cost us. And uh, just before this meeting, I got that summary from um from anna um and the calculation that i was looking for isn't on there but i can you can do the calculation but in essence the 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 the, the message is um if you separate out special ed cost from general ed cost total general ed cost um has actual cost actual expense over the last five years has increased a total, not year annually, but a total of 2% and, and special ed, a total of 26%. So um, I just wanted to make that point. I think it's important information um, because we talk about standing still numbers and, um, but we don't, um, uh, we, we don't, uh, you know, we, we, we work really hard to manage all of our costs, and and obviously we educate all of our children. But but we all know that um, that one of the one of the areas that is hardest for us to manage um, is special ed, and that has been um, clearly uh, relative to the big part of the budget has been has been driving the increases over the years, and it's something to keep in mind as we tackle this year's budget and work with the board of finance on the total change in cost. Thank you, Jennifer. Anything else for Dr. Grossman? Okay. Move right along to new business. Jack, I believe someone on the phone because this is the graduation date, and I will get us started by making the motion that the Grand Day Board of Education approve setting the date for graduation on Friday, June 11, 2021, as recommended by the superintendent. Second. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, Dr. Grossman, do you have any background to the weapons? Yeah, just real quick. Um, and as you recall, the state legislative body has said that the Board of Education can set the graduation date at any time after you map the calendar. And as you know, the calendar was adjusted this year that the executive order by the State Board of Education was 177 days of school. Yeah, June 11 reflects the 177 day of school for the Grand Memora High School senior class. My recommendation is to get the day on the books immediately so our parents and our students can start planning for a variety of different graduations and really paying close attention to the governor's executive orders regarding proms, regarding picnics, and regarding how graduation exercises can be held. Just getting us the date in the book will allow our families who do our post-graduation party really to start looking at the guidelines and paying attention. So I, I do recommend to the, the board that let's get this date on the book, whether we have another snow day or not for our seniors, we're far off the line in, in the year that one or two days um, going to 178 or 179, it, it's not going to hurt the senior class. I think just to be fair to them is let's get it on the books as soon as we can. So thank you very much. Thank you. As a parent of a graduate for the past two years, um, it's nice to just kind of have that known quantity, um, especially in a time when there's so many unknowns. So um, are there any any more discussion regarding that um, date? We do have a motion up on the floor. I concur with the whole part of the meeting the today. Let's get it. Let's get it done. <laughs> thank you. Great. I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. That motion passes. I don't think we have any extensions. Thank you. Jack, mark your calendar. Tell your family to 
Um, moving on to miscellaneous, uh, state and community reports, findings, personnel, finding facilities. Jenny. Uh, we had our um, favorite meeting of the year on the indoor air quality report and um, thank the 52 members of the school community that um, responded to the, to the report to give Shannon uh, good input. Shannon, we were joined also by Kevin Bogue, Bogue, who is a expert in indoor air quality and a resource that Shannon uses, um, who has perspective from other schools as well and, and was quite complimentary of Granby. Um, the uh, obviously we did the statement of accounts. Um, Anna reported that the uh, fuel bid results um, for for oil are in. Um, we buy uh, we bought last year and intend to buy next year thirty thousand gallons. And um, state line oil was the winning bidder by um, a pretty wide margin and are able to. Um, because they buy it and lock in the price early and, and they have the storage facilities is probably their advantage. So uh, the, the uh, price has come down um, for next year. It'll be $1.89 a gallon. Um, the, it's not gonna impact the budget that we're looking at very much because at the same time, the natural gas costs have probably gone up. So Anna said, we can hunt for it in the budget, but we're not gonna see any <laughs> savings. Um, uh, but uh, it's good to have that one put to bed and locked in for another year. Um, and then we did, uh, um, the building committee meets again tomorrow and then we'll have a more complete update to the full board on what we think we can get done with the available funds and what we can't. Um, and then we also talked a bit about the message that we got during this week about what appeared to be potentially a leak related to the high school vestibule. Um, it proved it was not related to that. It's related to um, uh, drainage pipes off the main roof that pass through and because of frozen um, uh, frozen blockage down in the ground uh, backed up and it appeared on the vestibule roof. So pro it was probably fortunate because we, we might not have seen it otherwise and it could have caused more damage. Um, but the bottom line it, is it was it's not a design flaw um, and it's and uh, the immediate problem, uh, well, it, it probably has to get fixed and will out of the maintenance budget, um, putting something in so that to keep that pipe from freezing in the future. Um, and then the, the notion was to the extent that this kind of problem could exist in other drainage areas, uh, it, um, uh, it's something that we would wanna include when we have the whole high school roof uh, redone in the next couple of years, which was part of the bond referendum. Uh, I think those are all my relevant notes. Um, Mark or Melissa, if you have anything to add, please be welcome. They're shaking their heads now, so I think we're proud of Thank you, Jenny, for that report. Uh, moving on to Crack and Cave. I know Crack had their legislative, I can't remember if they called it a workshop or Breakfast. Breakfast <laughs> virtually last week. Um, Mark, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, just a couple things very quickly. So the credit board met today. Um, two things that I uh, would be happy to pass on and, uh, and to you in particular. So they're doing through crack a 21 day challenge that we got a brief on. Sounded like it's very similar to ours, but they're going to be a little ahead of ours. So uh, you may want to reach out to them and see if there's any of the specific details they're working on that might be a good fit for ours. Um, and also, if anybody else on the board, they invited any of us to participate in their 21-day equity challenge. So if anybody's interested, let me know and I can get you the information on how to sign up for it. Uh, and then the second thing is they are going to do a virtual day on the Hill. So I, I presume we're going to participate in that as we have in the past and we'll have some students involved, I presume. Okay, so you have that information already. That was the extent of my report. We got a brief legislative report, but it wasn't anywhere near as good as Mr. Anderson's. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, Grand Education Foundation. Dr. Grossman, or did you have something to do? No, they met recently. Yes, yeah, so the Grand Education Foundation met last week, and we were, the school system was the highlight of their agenda. And Mr. Dunn and our two members of our technology staff and Mr. Parsons 
presented a, a possibility of a, a grant of a, a major amount that the Education Foundation came to me asking for a grant of about $100,000. So we came up with a proposal of a television broadcast system. And we presented that to them last week, just as an informational, not as anything, as a formal proposal, but just to get their feedback and get their thoughts. And our technology teacher did a, an amazing job. And Mr. Dunn and Mrs. Parson. So we're, we're kind of waiting on some feedback from them. And it, is it something that they want to hear more about? And if they want to hear more about it, what we will do is we'll bring this proposal to the board of education to really share with you what our plans are and then really make, based upon some feedback that we get from you, really make a hardcore push to say this has board of education support and this has um, the administration support and now what does the Grammy Education Foundation like to do with it? For me, what's most important with grants in my short tenure here is the fidelity of it and the sustainability of it. To really look out five to 10 years from now, where is this program gonna be? What cost is this gonna be? And where are our students most importantly and the community at large going to be? So we have those answers, and but we're just kind of making this very slow and very thoughtful and making sure that it's sustainable and that it is something that we are bringing to the light and getting all constituents and feedback related. So it, it was a very good meeting that we had with the Grammy Education Foundation. Thank you, Dr. Harris. I hope they were able to see our student uh, representatives report this uh, earlier with the school in the spotlight. That definitely demonstrated how great that program is and can be. Um, calendar of events. I know it's in the back of our packet. Lots of sports on there. And since we have the streaming capability, I hope you tune in and cheer on our brand new videos. Um, and the other thing I wanted to just highlight on that was uh, the superintendent's um, forum, which is next week. Um, okay. Board member announcements. Anybody? Okay. I just would like to publicly thank. Um, Representative Anderson, thank you again for being here this evening. And also um, to Senator Dixon and Senator Wick, those who were able to join us in via Zoom. And a special thanks to John Lambert and John Rominger because you guys just really can control that Zoom meeting for us. Thank you for your in house support of all of that. Um, action items, Rosemary? None. Perfect. <laughs> thank you. And we have no need for an executive session, so I think. Um, and a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yeah, second. second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.